Hello, I'm Nicholas Kramer. Uh, I'm a conductor, uh, a keyboard player, and as a result, I do a lot of conducting from the keyboard. I'm looking forward so much to be doing the Handel's Messiah with the English Chamber Orchestra. We have a wonderful chorus, Botches 8, and terrific soloists. Uh, Carolyn Sampson, Yestin Davis, Andrew Staples, and Matthew Brook. I heard it when I was nine for the first time, and um, it completely grabbed me, uh, sitting, listening to it in the Usher Hall in Edinburgh. In fact, it wasn't even a performance, it was a rehearsal because my mother played in the orchestra. And it was, I don't know what, I mean, I, of course I was brought up with music, but it was something that went straight to me. And there is a directness of utterance that is maybe not to be found in other Handel works. Of course, there are bits and pieces from uh, from all the oratorios, from all the operas that will go straight, straight to the heart. But there's something about the the straightforwardness of the utterance that, that makes it endure. It was very popular during Handel's lifetime. Um, not everything he wrote was. Uh, but this was uh, once it was first performed in Dublin. The sequence starts with the pastoral, the, what's known as the pastoral symphony, which is actually called Pitha, P-I-F-A. Um, and why is it called Pitha? Because it's the music that the Pitherai Played. Now, the Pitharai were shepherds who came down from the mountains around Rome and played during Christmas, but they were bagpipers. So what we normally hear is a sort of dreamy, pastoral, uh, smooth interpretation of this music. Uh, you know, you hear, usually hear something like this. Go to sleep during that and far from it have you ever heard bagpipes playing like that so let's get the drone and so on uh, and it's uh, so don't be alarmed when you hear that uh, if you're coming to the concerts um, and then we move into the Restative, which announces, uh, well, in fact, incidentally, is the first bit of New Testament uh, in the in Messiah, mm -hmm. and it's um, sung by the soprano. And there were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Um, and I'm always trying to persuade the soprano to sing it as reportage, just like I did. And there were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And you think, what does this mean? Um, these are shepherds abiding, living in the field. This is, they're not coming out to be there. They live there. That's their job. And so you, you have this picture of these really, um, I mean, very, very devoted workers, um, farm workers, and they're keeping watch, they're keeping their flocks from danger. And okay, it may not be that cold in Israel at this, uh, at this time of the year, but, but still, it's something that we don't often think about because we're listening to the soprano's voice. So anyway, then this is what happens. And no, and because the orchestra come in and have this accompanied recipe. Um, this is where the drama begins, not and there were shepherds. So the angel of the Lord comes upon them and the glory of the Lord shines, uh, shines round about them and they are scared. Um, they are were sore afraid, uh, not surprising really. Um, and then Another unaccompanied recitative, in other words, secco recitative with just harpsichord and cello. And 
the angel said unto them, and then the angel speaks, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. So it's all very comforting, comforting stuff, um, and which they will need. They will need to calm down these shepherds. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, the Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And then, the, this is what you hear, which I can't play properly, but uh, you, you get an idea. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. So the, the, the multitude of the hosts are the sort of flapping of the wings, if you like, um, in, in the orchestra. Handel, of course, as we all know, was a very successful opera composer and had written um, many, many operas, nearly all his operas, in fact, by the time he wrote Messiah. Um, the reason he stopped writing operas is because they weren't popular anymore and he had to find a, a way of beginning, uh, you know, channeling his dramatic uh, flair. And of course he does that in a, in a, and my feeling is that the oratorios, and not this one particularly, because it, it's, it has a very different narrative, uh, unlike sort of Belshazzar or, or Samson or, you know, or Israel and Egypt. They have, they have much more continuous stories, if you like. Um, and it gets very complicated with the, the narrative of Messiah, because, of course, nearly all of it is the Old Testament. Um, but he does have an incredible, as, as we've just seen, dramatic uh, pacing. I would say that the continuity, the way it flows, is incredibly important, but particularly in part two, um, where, well, which is known as the sort of uh, the, the the trial and crucifixion bit. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't tell the story, but it follows the story again with Old Testament references, um, and there's a section really from all they that see him. Uh, sung by the tenor to uh, to the sort of where the tenor has this um, incredible the, the tenor sort of uh, personifies the stricken Jesus uh, in a, in such an extraordinary way even though these first of all the alto and then the tenor are talking about him they actually personify this the, the character and uh, all they that see him shall uh, laugh him to scorn as it's absolutely um, vicious uh, string writing here. And so on. And then um, all they that see him laugh him to scorn. And so uh, the orchestra is absolutely so much part of the drama of this and the illustration.